welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to all the schools. Guess what? You've just jumped all the way about 2,000 kilometers from South Africa to Kenya. And we're with a pride of lions, the Angama pride of lions. They have seven cubs. There are three females with them at the moment. They're lying on the edge of a deep, deep little... But we've followed them for the last couple of hours, and I'm hoping they're going to get up and move. We've also found a male lion that's not too far from here. But there we go, the Angama pride. Lots of little cubs. I can't wait to hear your questions. Uh, my name is Brent. I have VM on camera, and we are in the Maasai Mara in Kenya. Aren't they just too cute? So I'm guessing these guys are about five months old. Uh, at the oldest, probably closer to four months. Well, Jamie is searching for a male leopard, Hosanna, one of our favorites. We've got the first glimpse of a male lion, one of four that lord over this northern part of the Mara Triangle. And uh, they don't really have a coalition name yet. Now, they also go across the river to the Marsh Pride. Now, I'm just going to try to show you quickly because he's snoozing. Okay, so pretty much behind those that line of trees, there's some very green area there. And that's, that's the famous marsh where the Marsh Pride tend to hang out. And as I said, the, this is the coalition that's over the Angama Pride. And they're an offshoot from the Marsh Pride. And he is a big, beautiful boy. And there he is. He's not too far from the females and cubs, probably about oh, 200 meters, maybe not even that far. But he is being very, very lazy. And he hasn't moved since we found him. And he's probably not going to move too much. Hi, Caden. Caden is wondering, do lions eat grass? Caden, uh, they do, but not very often. So lions are predators and carnivores, which means they eat meat. Sometimes you will see lions eating grass when they've got an upset tummy. Uh, they'll eat the grass to try help their tummy. But normally they like buffalo, wildebeest, zebra, giraffe, and all the other animals out here. So lions eat the other animals. So they are meat eaters, carnivores. And it is just a glorious afternoon here. Jade, hello. Nice to hear from you. Jade would like to know, do all lions have manes? Uh, Jade, they do not. Only the boys and then only again the adult boys or the big boys have manes. And the reason they have manes is to protect their neck and back of their head and their throat when they are fighting for other with other male lions so male lions will fight for girlfriends and territory so that's why they have the, developed or evolved this big mane it's to help them protect themselves when they are fighting now the females which we saw very for a very short time a little bit earlier they don't have manes a male will only really start developing his mane properly from about two years old where it's, it's quite visible but it'll only be fully developed at about six years old and I would say he is definitely an adult, probably somewhere between 6 and 10 years old. I haven't really had a good look at his face yet. But maybe, I'd say, just looking at him, he looks quite in quite good nick. So maybe not as old as 10, uh, maybe 6 to six to 8 years old. And he's doing what lions do best at this time of the day, and that's snooze. So a male lion will probably sleep for about 20 hours a day, every day, and uh, only move around for four hours. And generally that is after dark, or when it's cool in the early morning and late afternoon. So there is a possibility he might get up and move soon. So we're not going to move too far. I think we're just going to keep going up and down between him and where the, the females and the babies are. And I'm hoping they're going to join together later. Now, Gage is wondering how fast are lions. Gage, they're really fast, but they can only be very fast for a short period of time. Gage, they, they can do up to about 20 meters per second, but they can't keep it up for very long. So very, very fast is the answer. Much faster than you, me, or Usain Bolt. 
I'm just trying to see if the lionesses have started moving back towards us. Ah, now we're going to make our way back towards where the, the females and the babies are. But while we do that, James has got the little five, well, a member of the little five who's named after the big five, Lion. Well, we are moving all along from a creature with eight legs to one with four. But that is snoozing. So you can't see the rest of the lionesses. They're in the grass around there. So we dashed across to the other side of the lugger. Now, a lugger is a donga or a big ravine uh, in Swahili. And uh, we wanted to be on the right side where the lionesses were for when they got moving. Now, if we come up from this side and we look up towards the escarpment and up towards Angama, on that hill are zebra, giraffe, uh, coax heart beast, topi, and uh, buffalo. Now, and oh, there you can just see the giraffe. You see the giraffe here? In the distance there. Now, even though at the moment the Angama Pride seems to, to specialize in Warthog, there's a male around, so there's a good chance that they might get moving and head towards that mass of animals on the short grass around the escarpment. And uh, we, we just wanted to be on the right spot to follow them when they got moving. Because I think what they're going to do is move towards this little road we're on and then head up towards the escarpment. Now the cubs are still running around. They pop up and about every now and then. And uh, I am hoping they will pop up onto that termite mound again and join one of the adult females. Now you've always got to be quite careful because to get around this lugger we had to go a long, long way. And I just hope that one or the other lionesses haven't snuck off, so I'm constantly scanning around. Now, remember, we are live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. More specifically, we're right in the northern corner of the Mara Triangle. And uh, it is an incredibly beautiful and incredibly productive area. And uh, that's why this lion pride is doing so well. And it's one of the most stable lion prides in the Mara Triangle. Remember, hashtag Safari Live uh, if you have any questions for us about the Mara, the lions, the, well, everything and, and anything to do with this beautiful, stunning part of the world. Now, on our first safari here, oh, then if we go down to the Samaki Swamp, now the Samaki, Samaki means fish in in. in in Swahili and it's a, it's a long way away from us here but it is incredible the distances you can see there must be a hundred or so elephants spread over the swamp can you see them there Vim? look at that now we were actually on our way down towards the Samaki swamp till we found the lions and they are quite a few of them are looking quite hungry so we decided to to wait it out uh, with the lions and oh, I'm sure we will get to show you the Samaki Swamp in the next couple of days. I'm very excited to just show you every single new area. And it is just the most in beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. Well, Karen says it is so gorgeous here. Uh, Kenya is definitely on her bucket list. Well, Karen, maybe you'll see VM and I bombing around the Mara looking for lions and leopards and cheetahs and other creatures. Hayden is wondering, do lions attack giraffes here? And well, apparently they do quite often. And as I said, I'm still learning what's going on here, which is, makes it even more exciting for me. But they do actually, uh, the day before we arrived, a pride to the sort of south east of us uh, apparently killed a baby giraffe but they have been known when the males are present to take adult giraffe as well the thing that I find almost uh, almost unbelievable especially after all the time I've spent in the bush in southern Africa is that there were four lionesses and they had a single buffalo bull by himself and the buffalo chased them and chased them for a good 50 or 60 meters and they had no interest in even attempting to grab onto such a big dangerous beast, unlike our beloved Inkahumas of the Sabi Sands, who see a buffalo and their eyes light up. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. 
there is just so much more food around here that they are not forced to go after the big prey like buffalo and uh, they specialize while the wildebeest aren't here it mostly in, in in warthogs from what the guides tell me but when the males are around they will go for buffalo and uh, so quite interesting how huh? and one must remember that a lot of animal behavior is area specific rather than species specific so the lions and the mara are going to behave differently to the lions and the sabi sands in some ways and we've already seen how they really love to use a tree to, to, to rest in to get away from the flies uh, today nice and windy so the flies will be battling so the lions not needing to scamper up into the into the boughs of a shepherd's tree to escape the biting flies at the moment and uh, it's going to be interesting. We're going to learn a lot and we're going to see some behavior that we're not used to while we're in the morrow. So it is, it is so exciting. Hi, Monique, who's in London. Monique is wondering, have I seen Scarface, the very famous male lion yet? Uh, I have not. Uh, I heard he swam the Mara River and he's actually on the other side of the river at the moment. Apparently his limp is a bit better and he's looking a bit healthier than he was. Now, tomorrow we're probably going to go head down into the area uh, that Scarface frequents in the triangle side and who knows, maybe a little bit of lion luck is in order and we'll see that gorgeous big boy. Now we're still in the rainy season at the moment and you can see there are some clouds building. We have some forecast for rain over the next few days, but you have these wonderful big thunderstorms. You can actually drive around them, but you can see forming up on the escarpment. Now when the clouds, from what I've learned and chatting to people, when the clouds form in this area, the prevailing winds are going to push them towards Lake Victoria, but when the clouds form to the almost directly north of us or northeast of us the rain is going to hit us now i actually could see some rain a bit earlier it looks like it's dissipated so often you'll just see these patches of rain and you can actually plan your safari to avoid the rainstorms as you drive around of course you do get um, the great deluges that you cannot avoid at any cost uh, but we are all prepared don't worry uh, we won't get too wet and uh, the cameras and equipment definitely won't Oh, it's so beautiful. Ah, hello, James. James is asking, besides the shepherd's tree, uh, what other trees are common there? Now, I'm still learning the trees, um, but some of the, the, the bushes and stuff I know. Have you got that tree there, Vim? One to the right of the lioness. Now, that is a Balanites, a torchwood. But it is not the same one uh, we get in, 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 in South Africa. It is Egypt something. Oh, I can't remember. My, my brain is, is failing me. But it is a torchwood, but it's Egypt, uh, Egypt, 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 obviously named after Egypt. But I cannot for life of me remember the full scientific name. <gasps> Naughty Brent. I'm going to have to beat myself and scold myself and get back to my books later. Now, and we along the river, it's very interesting. You've got uh, Walburgias and... Um, Egyptia. There we go. Thank you, Master Henry and Juma. Um, you've got Walburgias. You've got a different species of, 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 of Diospyrus, which is a jackalberry, and Acacia tortillus, which is another one we know. And now we've even got um, woolly caper bushes, uh, the most common little bushes that we're seeing around here. So we do know those ones from back home. And one of the exciting things is, is learning all the new trees. Now, there's a whole host of croton species. Um, there's about five different species of croton, and, which are, are the common name is feverberries. And they are generally up around the edges or in any rocky areas or cliffs. And that's where you're going to find the crotons. And, um, oh, there's just so, so many different trees to learn. And it is so wonderful. What are you spotted, VM? Just looking at the trees. Now, almost all of those are Balanites, and, um, and of course, we're sitting in a great open plain, but why don't we go see what the open plains of Cheetah Plains have in, whole, uh, have in store for Tristan. Look at that incredible cloud bank, and it looks like most of that rain is going to be pushing through to the west towards Lake Victoria. We're still playing the patience game with the Angama pride. We can still only see a single lioness. The rest of them are lying in the long grass and she's fast asleep on top of a termitaria. She got a little visit from a cub for about a split second before the cub went off. And, uh, well, I know I'm live, but it seems like I've lost comms with final control. Oh, heads up. 
and uh, hopefully this could be the beginning of the move of the hunt now we can't really see in the long grass but there are lots of animals around us at the moment and lots of warthog and at this time of the day they're going to be heading back towards their burrows she could just be getting up to check where the little cubbies are and oh she spotted something where are my binoculars there they are and she is looking up towards the river.